Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and today just something very quickly, something that I received in the mail today, ordered it last week, arrived rather quickly and it's this, look at this, what does it say, Arcbird UHF. Now this is the Arcbird long range UHF system and I've got a stack of UHF systems which I'll be testing very, very shortly because I've got the Dragon Link, I've got the Orange, I've already tested the R Miles C and found that wanting but I've got you know, several, I'm stacking up these uh, long range UHF systems because a lot of people are starting to use them now. And the reason I got this one was because, well, Arcbird's a fairly well known name in the industry. They've got the, um, the autopilot return to launch OSD system, which I've also got here for review, done part one. I'll be doing part two very shortly. But the thing that I thought was quite interesting about this particular product was that the way it's designed to be set up, it can be used as a relay, an RC relay station. So instead of whacking a little thing on the back of your transmitter and attaching an antenna to your transmitter and bypassing the 2.4 circuitry inside, this allows you to position your RC system, your UHF RC system, some distance from your base station where all, the all your video gear is. And that's really quite clever because some people have found that UHF transmitters can interfere with their video signal. So when you have your powerful UHF transmitter on your radio, the signal from that is picked up by your video receiver and that causes lines, interference, all sorts of problems like that. Now it doesn't always happen, but sometimes it happens, it can be an issue. So the concept here is rather clever. What you do is you take this little unit and you plug a receiver into it and then that receiver is bound to your transmitter. So a regular 2.4 receiver, bind it to your transmitter and then you can use your transmitter um, which will talk to this, which will then relay in UHF to the receiver on the plane. Clever? I don't know. We'll try it out and see whether it works, because if it does work, it's a really nice solution. And one of the things that really impressed me most about this, and of course I feel a bit disappointed because um, a few months ago I forked out for a new welder. I've got a TIG welder. The old one blew up. Chinese quality strikes again. And I'm going to do a teardown on that in my other channel fairly soon, show you just what's inside these cheap welders from China, or at least the older ones. So I bought a new one. And it's a TIG welder, you know, this, I don't know, it's about $1,800, they're not cheap, but it lets you weld any kind of material, you know, aluminium, aluminum, stainless steel, steel, even copper and other materials you can weld with a TIG welder. Everyone should have one if you're building stuff. And I thought, wow, great, I'll be able to use that TIG welder to wire up this particular product. But no, no, look, it says, no welding setup. I don't need a welder. <laughs> to be honest, it's more Chinglish. I think they mean no soldering or no soldering in America. So uh, it sort of makes you wonder a bit when you get a product that talks about welding on the front of the box when it's a long range RC product. Never mind, I will be pulling it apart. I will be putting it on the bench along with all the other systems. We'll do some comparisons. We'll see whether it's really a good option for those of you who may be having UHF problems. Now it's a, looking at the back of the box, it's I think it's a one point, it's point 0.1 watts to point 0.1, 0.1 to 1.4 watts adjustable, which is kind of, why would you want to adjust it? I mean, if you've got a long range UHF, you want to go a long way, don't you? So why would you want it at 0.1 watts? Maybe for range testing. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll look at it. There's no instructions in here. I'm not going to unbox it because that's boring, but I wanted to give you a quick intro, a bit of an advance. What I will say is I bought another receiver as well, and or I've already found something I don't like. don't like it. Because if you look at this receiver, and I noticed this when I saw it listed on the Hobby King website, look at the antenna. Look, look, I mean, oh, really, really? Look at this. It's like something you put on the top of your car for your mobile phone. And it's hardwired, hardwired into the little receiver. Now the receiver's quite small, that's fine, great, wonderful. But this, for a start, in some cases it's not going to be long enough, that wire. And secondly, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a center loaded antenna. Uh, uh, it's not, uh, it's, you know, I don't know, I'd really like to have some diversity or I'd like to have an antenna that was, you know, um, it could be mounted in a plane other than vertical perhaps. There's not much flexibility in this, but it is fairly cheap, fairly cheap. So we'll bear that in mind when we compare them all. But I wanted to give you a quick look, a quick advanced view of the no welding setup Arcbird UHF long range system. So stay tuned, as I say, all those UHF systems side by side on the bench, tested, compared, and then flown. As soon as my exemption comes through, we'll fly them because it's important. Any questions, pop them on the bottom of the video. If you've got anything you particularly want to see when I review this product, then ask now and I'll include that in the review. And thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you like the videos. If you're first time on RC Model Reviews, then subscribe and YouTube will tell you when new videos appear. Bye for now, see you soon. Back to the bench.